So there is a podcast coming up featuring Harry Potter author and transphobe J.K. Rowling, and in said podcast, which we haven't been able to hear in full yet because it hasn't been released at the time that I record this video, she is going to seriously claim that she never intended to offend anyone with her transphobic comments. And if you think that she's transphobic, you're horribly mistaken. Seriously, like she's actually saying this, I'm assuming with a straight face, but here's the details, courtesy of Variety Magazine. In the forthcoming podcast, The Witch Trials of J.K. Rowling, Rowling says, what has interested me in recent years, particularly on social media, is when fans say you've ruined your legacy. Oh, you could have been beloved forever, but you chose to say this, and I think you could not have misunderstood me more profoundly. Rowling, in the trailer for the podcast, says, I never set out to upset anyone. Sure. However, I I was not uncomfortable with getting off my pedestal. The Witch Trials of J.K. Rowling to premiere February 21st comes from the Free Press, the independent media company founded by Barry Weiss, a former op-ed writer for the New York Times. The series is hosted by Megan Phelps Roper, who grew up in a family that were members of the Westboro Baptist Church, arguably the most obnoxious and rabid hate group in America, according to the Southern Poverty Law Center. She left a life of religious extremism in 2012, according to her her bio, an experience she chronicled in her memoir, Unfollow. Well, look, I'm sure that she's being completely genuine here. I'm sure that this person who tweeted out Mary Turfmas is so sad to learn that people misinterpreted her rhetoric as being anti-trans. Look, honestly, nothing irritates me more than this type of disingenuous bullshit here. You're a bigot. We all know you're a bigot. So own your hatred. Just own it. Say it with your full chest. J.K. Rowling, don't be a coward because she spends all of her time tweeting from her castle about how terrible trans people are and how they're a threat to women. And yet when she's actually questioned about her beliefs, well, she doesn't own it. Like the coward that she is, she feigns ignorance and she's just so sad that people are mistaking her. Yeah, that's bullshit. Now, J.K. Rowling may be a hateful bigot, but she's not stupid. And she is savvy enough to couch her rhetoric in language that makes it seemingly less hateful to individuals who don't know any better. But when you look at what she's actually saying, when you view her associations, you can see that all she's doing is strategically giving herself plausible deniability. And I think that James Stephanie Sterling, a non-binary YouTuber, broke down her history of transphobia, and this is just the tip of the iceberg, but nonetheless, they brought the receipts, and what they have to say is uh, important if you still are under the delusion that J.K. Rowling is not transphobic. Let's watch. Rowling couches her hatred in plausible deniability, but her daily obsessive takes on us, her constant comparisons of trans women to men, her verbatim repetition of gender-critical talking points makes her feelings clear. She follows, is best friends with, and outright claims to be one of the many prominent TERFs, trans-exclusive radical feminists these days rebranded to gender criticals. Her slide into open fascism as a result has been horrifying. She is a fan of Matt Walsh, a fascist so into fascism that he self-describes as one and has made a career from accusing LGBTQ plus people of the very pedophilia he himself seems to be a fan of. She's liked tweets from the abjectly abhorrent Libs of TikTok account, a notorious right-wing platform that outs queer people and is used to organise attacks against drag shows as well as threats against hospitals. She retweets unscientific drivel by queer phobes like Baroness Nichols she stands with Maya Forstatter, who, after losing her job at a progressive organisation over demeaning anti-trans comments, has dedicated her life to combating trans rights. She once sent accidental transphobic profanity to a nine-year-old girl after pasting a comment from an anti-trans website she was reading and copying at the time. She called criticism of this censorship and authoritarianism, seeming to defend her right to rope kids into her obsession. And she is obsessive. Scroll through her Twitter and you'll find that she thinks about trans people all day, every day. She herself 
has fought against Scotland's gender recognition reforms, scaremongering and spreading outright lies about a law that would simply make being trans a tiny bit easier. She still has the nerve to act offended at accusations of phobia while literally campaigning against our basic rights and legal dignity. At first, she tried to keep up the mask of someone who supports trans people but just has concerns and wanted to protect women's spaces, a long-time gender-critical dog whistle. She claimed her liking of transphobic tweets was just her fingers slipping, honest, and now she's an ardent supporter of Helen Joyce. While we're, while we're trying to get through to the decision makers, we have to try to limit the harm. And that means reducing or keeping down the number of people who transition. Every one of those people is basically you know, a huge problem to a sane world. Like if you've got people, that, and whether they're transitioned, whether they're happily transitioned, whether they're unhappily transitioned, whether they've detransitioned, if you've got people who've dissociated from their sex in some way, Every one of those people is someone who needs special accommodation. Every one of them is a difficulty. Yeah. So in my opinion, this is not debatable. And that video goes on. So I'll link to it down below if you want to watch it. It's not debatable. Okay. She's too far down the turf rabbit hole to still be claiming that she's not actually transphobic. I mean, it's like saying, well, David Duke, he doesn't say that he's racist anymore. So maybe we should take him at his word. But it's David Duke. We've seen what he said. I mean, same thing here, right? I mean, she's let the mask slip a little bit too many times. So to claim at this point that she's not transphobic, you're either uninformed or you're purposefully trying to obfuscate her views because you agree with her and you don't like that hate label that's attributed to her and hope that it doesn't also rub off on you. But if you're going to defend her, you are defending somebody who is a turf and a transphobe. That's a fact. Now, another element of this interview that I have to touch on is the interview itself. Now, let me just say right off the bat, I am not against platforming JK Rowling. She is somebody who is a billionaire, right? But if you're going to platform her, you have to do it in a responsible way so you don't inadvertently allow her to spread hate. Now, Megan Phelps Roper is the individual who's conducting this interview, and she is a former member of the notoriously hateful Westboro Baptist Church, as the article pointed out. And you can see her here holding up a sign that says, F slurs doom nations. Yes. Now she's since escaped the cult that she was indoctrinated into, which is commendable. And uh, she published a book talking about how she left extremism. So the problem is she claims that she left extremism. And I commend her for that. We can't control who raises us and what religion we're indoctrinated into. So she gets a full pass there. And if she has tried to go out of her way to combat the harm that she put out into the world, then I give her credit for that. But you left extremism and now you're inadvertently pushing another version of extremism. It's not anti-gay extremism specifically, it's anti-trans extremism. Now, I haven't seen the interview to be fair, so maybe she pushes back against J.K. Rowling, but the entire way that this is framed is concerning, right? Because the way that you're platforming her is you're giving her the chance to tell her side of the story while not giving trans people the chance to make the case as to why what she says is deeply, deeply troubling. So Megan is promoting this interview in her Twitter banner, and it's called The Witch Trials of J.K. Rowling. And I get it. She wrote Harry Potter, so witch trials, I get the pun there. But to say that this is some sort of a witch hunt or the witch trials, as if she's the one who is being hated on, suggests that she's the victim and not the victimizer. And also, this is published on Barry Weiss's platform, who has also done turf apologia herself. Now, Megan was confronted by someone on Twitter about the title saying, given the title, it's pretty easy to see how, quote, unbiased it is, not. But Megan pushed back saying, the title is ambiguous. Toward the end of our conversations, I spent a long time talking with JK Rowling about discernment, about how a person can ever know if they're standing up for what's right or joining a moral panic. I think you'll be surprised by the thoughts she shares. Mm, so in other words, you're tacitly confirming that this is indeed a softball interview and you're pushing one perspective. I mean, imagine asking David Duke, well, how do you know if you're morally in the right or you're just jumping on board with the moral panic when it comes to interracial marriage? I mean, do you understand why this is so frustrating? Because Megan Phelps Roper is somebody who pushed hatred and she claims to have made amends, right? And she's left extremism, but here you are again, pushing more hate throughout the world after you claim to leave that.
These things aren't morally gray areas, right? We can actually look at these situations very clear-eyed and determine that there's a group of people that wants to exist and another group of people that wants them to not exist. Morally, that's pretty clear to me. That is crystal clear, in fact. It's not a debate as to whether or not trans people exist or not. They exist. So the question that we all have as cis people is, are we going to respect their existence or are we not going to do that and try to eliminate them from existence? J.K. Rowling has pushed the latter strategy, right? So to pretend as if this is even a debate inadvertently pushes this extremism that you claimed to move away from, Megan. Now, I'm not against you platforming J.K. Rowling. I mean, she has a bigger platform than any of us here. But to get her ear and not push her vehemently on these issues to explain specifically how she's hateful and merely just like pick her brain, that's propaganda. That is anti-trans turf propaganda. And apparently Megan hasn't learned her lesson. But either way, going back to J.K. Rowling, she is the individual who very clearly is the problem here, right? Pushing anti-trans bigotry, trying to change the minds of people, influence culture, to make it so that way trans people who are already marginalized, already victims, are less safe in this world. And that to me is disgusting, especially considering that she won't even take ownership of her hateful views. What a fucking coward. Up yours, up yours, up yours. Sons of bitches, bitches, bitches. Woke moralist, woke moralist, woke moralist. I dreamed I saw my maternal grandmother. She was stroking herself absentmindedly. I let her have her way. The genital region was exposed. I let her have her way.